Okay. So, so the title of my study today is Changes in Cropping Frequency in Response to Climate Warming. And so as we know, climate change has become a major threat to the global crop production. And many studies have focused on the crop yield because this is a pure uh, biophysical variable and they evaluated the climate warming or extreme events on the crop yield. But as we know, the total crop production of a specific area is determined not only by crop yield, but also the crop frequency in the crop land area. Because uh, and the crop air, and the crop frequency means uh, the number of cropping cycle in one year. And here we use the caloric yield to as a universal metric to to characterize all kinds of crop species so they can be uh, comparable in the same dimension. And the crop production uh, can be decomposed into the, the product of caloric yield, crop frequency in the crop land area. And as we know, in, uh, there are many studies that focus on crop yield, but uh, there are also some studies suggest uh, the other two Factor the other two terms like crop frequency in the crop land area is also uh, responsive to climate variation, but uh, it seems the degree of climate effects is quite unknown. And here it shows here it here it shows uh, climate change effects on the crop frequency on the crop frequency or so called uh, cropping multiple cropping facts. Uh, as we know, the cropping frequency uh, can be determined by the suitability of climate conditions. So many studies actually have suggested uh, future warmer climates will be beneficial for multiple cropping because uh, warmer, tem warmer temperature will expand the first, first uh, free period and shorter the cropping growth duration, as we have shown here, it seems the, uh, the, the future warmer climate will make the green season shorter compared with the current climate. So that means in the given year period, uh, the, it can hold more cropping cycle. So uh, there are some studies like this has suggested increase the future cropping frequency will be an effective corp, uh, effective climate adaptation to the future warming. But at the same time, we also find some studies suggest that uh, warming effects will reduce the cropping frequency more compared with the crop yield because cropping frequency is, is related with the use of cropland area. So uh, actually I have a recent study shows uh, high temperature will cause more wheat uh, cropland be abandoned due to the lower crop yield. So this uh, probably can explain why the cropping frequency will be lower with the future warmer climates. And so with all this study together, we can uh, probably infer that the response of cropping frequency to climate warming is regionally dependent. And how to uh, reconcile these inconsistent findings, it's uh, probably uh, necessary for the future climate change effect, uh, climate change study, and also is especially important for climate uh, adaptation study. Uh, so we conducted this study to use the global scale uh, data set collected by the FAO. They have the national scale crop uh, area and the crop yield. Uh, this kind of sta uh, statistics will be very useful to derive a, a national scale uh, carbon frequency and also carbon yield because uh, they are so they can uh, we, we, we firstly uh, decompose the total uh, total caloric production in a country into three components uh, they are they are the caloric yield and the cropping frequency and also the cropland area. 
So as we know, carbon uh, the, as we have said before, the caloric yield here means uh, the total the total calorie produced by a country, and divided by the number of harvest uh, the total area of harvest area. So uh, it makes all kinds of uh, crop species productivity be comparable in the same dimension. And we also derived the national scale carbon frequency. This is defined as uh, the number of harvest area and divided by the total carbon area. And so we can see the carbon frequency defined here. It's, uh, it's a aggregate of all cropping patterns in a country. It can include, it can means uh, double cropping or single cropping or even cropland is abandoned. And all of these carbon patterns uh, together uh, is the summary of the crop, cropping frequency defined here. Here it shows uh, the special pattern of the country level mean cropping frequency during our study period. So it shows uh, the Asia and some uh, tropical area have a higher carbon frequency, which is uh, which can be expected because these countries normally has a larger population and also uh, a limited land resource to include. Uh, so to to further increase the total crop production, the, the, the country, the farmer in these countries normally um, have a multiple cropping practice. And this shows the changes in the caloric production, carbon frequency, caloric yield, and also the carbon land area during the study period. And we can see all these areas and, uh, and also the global scale. Uh, it, there, there are some increasing trends for those, the four variables studied here. And, but the, the intensity of the increasing trend have uh, quite a different uh, intensity. Uh, so generally, we can see the, the increase in the caloric yield is a major driving factor of the caloric production, but uh, uh, increase in the harvest in, in the cropping frequency also contributed to the increase in the caloric production. But and, and in the recent decades, the cropping frequency actually has contributed uh, more compared with the cropland area which means cropping frequency could be a very effective way to increase the total uh, caloric production for a country, especially with the limited land resource for, for, the, for the countries. Uh, the, uh, so the previous slides shows the increasing trends for the crop uh, productivity crop yield and also the cropping frequency. And here we uh, looked into the into any variability of these variables because uh, uh, here we detrended the crop frequency and the color per yield to highlight the intended variability. So we can see here the, the two variable carbon frequency and the color per yield after they are detrended. Uh, both of them choose a significant uh, correlation. Uh, but uh, except for the Brazil and uh, China, the others and also the other countries and also the global mean choose a significant correlation, significant positive correlation. So this means uh, synchronized uh, uh, behavior between crop frequency and uh, crop yield. Uh, it suggests uh, uh, they have some the same kinds of driving factor probably. So we, we further build a climate model to explain the internal variation in both crop yield and crop frequency. Here it shows our model. And this is a, re a panel regression model to relate all the three variables with the climate and also the Farmer management practice like uh, uh, irrigation and fertilizer application. Uh, so the model include uh, 
a country specific quadratic trend, which is used to capture the country specific factors that explain the increase in crop yield and crop frequency, uh, such as technology progress. We also include a, a country scale, uh, a country specific fixed effect, which capture all time invariant and country specific factors that may explain the variation in Y. And for the climate function, the bait multiply the W, it is used to capture the uh, climate effects and also the human measurement effect. So for the baseline climate function, we use a quadratic function of uh, annual mean temperature and uh, total precipitation. Uh, so here uh, we want to highlight is we also include as a interaction term between the temperature and uh, irrigation and also the precipitation interaction between precipitation and uh, irrigation because uh, with the interaction term we can potentially detect whether the irrigation application will regulate the, the sensitivity of uh, those uh, dependent variables to climate like temperature and and, uh, and precipitation it's because uh, as previous uh, David has, David has uh, introduced the study, precipitation has in fact uh, to offset the what the water stress or heat stress for the crop yield. And okay, so this shows the model results. It has uh, several response curves to show how the crop frequency, crop yield, caloric yield, and the caloric production respond to the temperature variation. Uh, we can see uh, generally all the three terms shows a nonlinear response to temperature. And when temperature is low, uh, the, two, the, the three variables are positively related with temperature. But when temperature goes high, uh, beyond the optimal temperature, it will, it will reduce the three variables. And we also find that the optimal temperature uh, for crop frequency is higher than the caloric yield, which means uh, future warming temperature probably is more harmful for the crop caloric yield than the caloric frequency than the carbon frequency. And uh, we can also find some interesting stuff is the irrigation application can not only increase the crop frequency, caloric yield and the caloric production, but also it can also shift the optimum temperature. Those triangles show the optimum temperature with different application rate of irrigation. So we can see higher irrigation can shift the optimal temperature to a higher value, which means because higher value normally means uh, uh, more resistant to the temperature uh, to the high temperature. So it means uh, we can use this statistical model to detect the offset effect of irrigation to uh, to the response of crop frequency, crop caloric yield to the warming stress. So this shows the global mean of uh, the one degree warming effects on caloric yield, carbon frequency, and uh, the caloric production. So each point is based on uh, the model we used uh, here. Uh, so here we use seven multiple models to test uh, the robustness of our findings. So model one is the baseline model using the quadratic function of mean temperature and precipitation. The other variables, uh, uh, we also, the other models we also use like the spline function and uh, the quadratic function estimated by the Lasso model. And we also use the GDD model to test uh, how, how the three variables respond to the future uh, warmer climate, a few, to respond to the degree, a uh, one degree warming scenario. And uh, because we, we can see here the global mean shows uh, the, the, the global mean response of carbon frequency is generally around uh, 
1.5%. So it's about half of the total decline in the character yield. This means that the, at the global scale, corporate frequency will be reduced by, uh, by warming. This is uh, contradictory to the previous findings, especially in the in the temperate area like U.S., because many studies has just uh, the the future warming will increase the cropping frequency, but uh, it does it does uh, confirms the findings in in the tropical area like Amazon, because uh, this, this study suggests the future warmer climate, future warming will uh, reduce the carbon frequency. And this uh, multiple tests confirms that the carbon frequency will, will be consistently reduced like the caloric yield. So we can, we can draw a simple conclusion that the future uh, warming scenario will not will not a beneficial factor for carbon frequency, but just like the character yield, which has been studied many many study many studies, uh, both carbon frequency and the carbon and the caloric yield will be reduced in the future. And uh, here we also. Uh, looks into the effect of irrigation application to uh, carbon frequency, caloric yield, and the caloric production. Because uh, with the interaction term between between carbon frequency and between carbon frequency, carbon yield, and temperature and precipitation, we can uh, derive the partial, uh, the partial derivative of uh, y to the irrigation, fri irrigation fraction. So we can, we can uh, get the sensitivity of each variable to irrigation. And this sensitivity suggests uh, the, the irrigation is generally Beneficial for all these variables, and the benefit is stronger in warmer and dry areas. Uh, so th these findings, especially for the effect of irrigation to the caloric yield, is consistent with the previous findings, because uh, in warmer and dry areas, irrigation application can offset some heat stress with evapotranspiration cooling and also provide additional water resource to ease the, the drought stress. And the magnitude we estimated here is quite large for the crop caloric production, especially for the for the Africa area. So here it can you can we can see the sensitivity of caloric production to your fraction is about five, which means 1% uh, increase in irrigation fraction will increase the caloric production by 5%. So this is a quite large. And then we projected as a, we projected as a carbon frequency crop caloric yield and the caloric production into future warmer climates with the two climate scenarios. Uh, the, 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 the figure shows we can uh, see only in the country, only the countries in cold areas like uh, Russia, uh, Canada, and those very, those, those countries with very low temperature will benefit from future warmer climate. But most other areas, especially the countries in South America and uh, Africa will see a reduction in carbon frequency. And when we look into the caloric yield, it seems almost all countries will experience a decline in caloric yield. So 
this is uh this is a uh, quite uh, uh this is uh, this shows uh, the the both corporate frequency and the caloric yield will be reduced in the future warmer climates and and the bad thing is uh, Although the crop frequency will be re will be increased in these cold areas, but uh, when the when the when we sum the two effects of crop frequency and the calorie yield, we can see even in the cold area like Russia and Canada, the net effect of warming on the caloric production is still negative. So this. This has some implications for the future future climate adaptation, which means even in the cold areas, uh, uh, the adaptation through increasing the carbon frequency is uh, insufficient to offset the total climate warming effects on the reduction in the caloric production. Uh, so. Uh, this this is the uh, the the projected increase in irrigation fraction. As we know, we have projected uh, uh, how much the yield uh, frequency will be changed in the future, and the total caloric production will be significantly reduced by warming temperature. But at the same time, irrigation application can offset some uh, part of the decline. So we want to know uh, how much additional increase in the irrigation application will be required to fully uh, offset the, the decline in caloric production due to future climate change. Uh, as expected, so we can see uh, those countries with high temperature like uh, Africa and uh, South America, those countries has to uh, equipped with more irrigation cropland to fully offset the negative effect in the future. Because these countries, as we have suggested, these countries shows a very large decline in total calorie production, but also because these countries has a, has a lower irrigation error fraction during the historical period. So they has to that has to increase more compared with uh, countries like China and India. They have already have a good uh, in irrigation infrastructure. So we can we can with this model we can project uh, in countries like Africa, at least like five or four percent of increase in the irrigation air fraction will be required to totally uh, offset the negative effect of climate change. But this increase in irrigation fraction will be uh, probably constrained by the local water resource and also the government's investment on the infrastructure. So this could be quite a challenge, especially for the countries in Africa. And so let's. Uh, this is our findings, uh, the conclusion of, of, of findings. So generally we can uh, derive the following uh, conclusion is we find that climate warming is beneficial for the carbon frequency only in northern cold area. But in the other most uh, warm areas, the future warming will cause a negative effect on the carbon frequency. And uh, globally, carbon frequency will be declined by like uh, Five uh, one one point five percent by one degree, which can constitute about uh, one third of the total caloric production for the whole global. And at the same time, the irrigation can partly uh, offset the negative effects of warming, but uh, the irrigation expansion will be uh, limited by the local water resource and the investment on infrastructure. So it could be a challenge for the future climate adaptation for the 
according to warmer warmer countries like Africa and uh, Brazil, because they normally have uh, a low irrigation fraction in the historical period. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Fink, for uh, this uh, nice uh, presentation. So. Uh, now it's time to have questions from the participants. I don't know if you have any questions for uh, David or for Pink for both presentations. You can uh, either raise your hand or uh, put on your microphone and uh, ask your question directly. Any question? So uh, if there are no questions or waiting for questions. Maybe I, I, I was wondering uh, for the first presentation, uh, the David's presentation on the, um, the costs of uh, irrigation. You were talking about this uh, thing uh, for in the, the conclusion, because uh, when we assume that irrigation could be a solution for adaptation, for example, we assume that we have enough water either in the ground, uh, ground um, water or rivers. So this is not. The, the, the case everywhere, uh, specifically in uh, the deserts, for example, in, uh, in, um, in Africa. So uh, how do you think we could uh, have this solution? This, is, this, this will be a very costly solution uh, in some places in the world. So uh, how do you think we could um, manage to uh, have, to take into account this uh, costs of, uh, of irrigation to keep uh, the irrigation as a solution for adaptation. I don't know if David or uh, Pink, you have any ideas on? Uh... No, I have no magic solution. Huh? Uh, clearly, uh, it, it seems that the water from river will not be enough. Okay. So it means that uh, we have to find the water elsewhere. Or it can be still rivers, but in that case, you need to make some, uh, some um, special uh, systems to transfer the water from one basin to another basin, for example, which is uh, costly, but not impossible. For example, in uh, California, that's what uh, the Americans did. Huh? They transfer the water from, uh, from uh, the Rocky Mountains to California huh? using uh, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some system of uh, canals and so on. So it's, this example shows that it's not possible to do it. Uh, but of course, it means uh, some investment. Uh, and, uh, so there are a lot of investment now to remove the salt from uh, the seawater as well. We can see that in some countries uh, like uh, Arabia Saudia or Israel mm. who do that at a relatively large, large scale. Huh? Um, uh, but here again, it's, uh, it will have some cost. Um, so we see some options, but uh, we also see that uh, there will be some cost. Of course, there are this, uh, this system of uh, precise irrigation system, like uh, drip irrigation and so on, that also prove to be very useful. Um, um, so on one way, we see that uh, irrigation water resource will be key in the future. Huh? Uh, on the other end, we see that uh, it will do some cost. It will, I think it's difficult to estimate the level of cost, but we also see some technical options uh, that are available. So yeah, difficult to anticipate what will happen on my, in my view. My view. Okay, thank you very much. Ping, do you have any uh, uh, idea? Do you have any feedbacks from uh, on this question? Uh, you mean the ground the groundwater resource to the, the cost? You showed us, for example, in Africa, uh, we could uh, increase the yield by five percent, which is a great the yield or the production. I don't remember, but yeah. how costly it will be for these countries because uh, water is not uh, easily available. If yes. we need to put uh, some investments, we should have uh, public investment, then we need the money and it's not so the easy uh, for uh, every country. Yes, I think I think probably the government needs some incentive policy to help the farmer to adopt some new cultivars, which is more resistant to the droughts, dress and his dress, which will be uh, uh, equally important for those farmers. And on the other hand, as you said, the irrigation fraction, irrigation water resource is not easily to obtain in that area. So probably uh, some new technology like the drip 
irrigation could be adopted to save the water resource and uh, generally to increase the effect, 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 effectiveness of the water resource use in the agriculture area. So I think this, these are possible solutions for these countries. Uh, I have another question, but I don't know if there are, there are questions from the participants. Okay, I, I, I was thinking about the idea of um, virtual water. I don't know if you, you know what is it, virtual water. It's when you produce uh, some fruits or um, vegetables in countries which are uh, do not have a lot of um, water, like African countries, and then you export through trade. So you export water, which is something which is rare. So yes. I don't know if the solution to, to have this, to implement these irrigation policies is, uh, will be uh, efficient when you have this trade and you are just exporting something which is uh, very costly. Yeah, I think that's, this could be a challenge or question because the, those water resource consumption implemented in the international trade could be could be tracked through some like uh, new technology with the, the blockchain. I think you know they they can track how much uh, water resource or fertilizer has been used during the production of the food. So that can be an effective way to you know to save the resource consumption for those every country, I think, probably. Because it can, because people, where, where your food comes from and how much the resource it has been used to produce the food, it can remind people the, the environmental footprint of the food production. So I think it could be useful. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions, remarks, or uh, discussions on the floor? Raja, can I ask a small yes. question? Yes, Kamel, please. Oh, Kamel, please. Thank you. Yeah, I have, I have no clue about this crop frequency, but I have one small question about Africa, because it looks in Africa we have two seasons, and each season almost two, three months maximum, let's say. How we can increase the crop frequency in this case, and what's meant? One crop stay one month and a half in the in the field, so maybe they have the, the answer. And they have another question to David about um, this crop model, which are I think ten crop model run at a global level, and this model try to predict and maybe to predict yield with and without irrigation. Can you please say something how this model are calibrated because they are. Yeah, we are speaking at the global level, so maybe, maybe you have some, something to say about this calibration, how this model are calibrated. Thank you. Thank you, Kamel. Uh, Ping or David, I don't know if you would like to answer the question. Uh, so, for the, so for the first question, it's about uh, the uh, copper frequency. Yes, yes, it is about crop frequency. And they said in Africa, we have two seasons in yeah. the year, and each season is almost three months, let's say. Yeah. So, what means to have more crops in one season? How to increase the crop frequency in this case in one season? Do we have one crop which stay one month and a half in the, the field? What means increasing crop frequency in Africa? You mean how to increase the uh, the the, uh, the question I think is uh, it is Corporate feasible. It is, is so always, it, always feasible to uh, do that uh, everywhere. At least in Africa, maybe everywhere yes. it's possible. Yeah, in Africa. in Africa at least. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, I understand. Yeah, uh, I think uh, because we have suggested that normally with a higher temperature, it will reduce the carbon yield, so it will somehow was more cropland will be abandoned. In that case, I think that means the crop yield and the crop frequency is tightly correlated. So if we can increase the crop yield, the crop frequency at the national scale will be 
in, will be increased at the same time. So in some areas, probably they have already been, uh, multiple carbon has already very popular in some specific area, but uh, it is, I think it still has a larger potential to increase uh, copper frequency in other arable areas because in some in some cases is probably the temperature or the or the or, or other environment variables are, are suitable for the multiple carbon but it can be uh, restrained by water resource so i think increase the water supply will be very important to increase the carbon focus in most areas. And another factor is uh, multiple cropping probably is limited by the soil for the soil nutrients because if you have multiple cropping, uh, the, the soil nutrient will be consumed much more than the single cropping area. So if the soil soil quality is degraded in the future, it might not be good to support the multiple cropping. So I think generally the two plus the water resource and the soil, soil, soil quality will be some key factors to influence how, to, how much we can increase the carbon frequency. Okay, thank you, Ping. There were a question for David. I don't know if uh, Kamal, you, you have- Yeah, the, yeah David, the, crop, have... the crop models are calibrated using uh, local experiments uh, usually. So uh, you have field experiments and uh, they calibrate uh, the crop models, at least many, of, many parameters of the crop models, they, they are calibrated using local field experiments. Um, and then they, they are used at the global scale, uh, either directly or uh, um, run on different locations and then extrapolated using some spatial uh, statistical techniques. Um, so yes, and, um, and this explains partly their divergence because they are not calibrated exactly on the same sites, not always at least, and, uh, and they are not based on the same equations and, uh, and that explains the huge uh, between uh, crop models uh, variability that we can find uh, um, in this uh, data set, yes. Okay, thank you very much, David.